what are your values? Do you feel like you are fluctuating between one identity and the other? I've been feeling this way for quite a while now. I seem to jump from one interest to the other. I seem to dye my hair from pink and then dye back to black and then dye rainbow and then be blonde and then have redhead. And I really didn't understand why I've been doing things this way. And I think a very big reason after chatting with my therapist earlier today, I think a really big reason is because it is actually part of my core values to have a sense of identity freedom. And if you feel like you are lost, if you feel like you're confused about where to go next, if you feel like the core of you is like shaky and unsteady and people seem to tell you that you change all the time, then this might be helpful to you too. One thing to help you really get that sense of stability and that sense of consistency is to know your core. And it is totally normal for your core to also have an element of inconsistency. Just like for me, because one of my core values is to be free and to have that freedom. And part of that freedom is identity freedom. And this is the reason why I change my style all the time. I change my hair. I change my brand identity. I change how my Instagram looks all the time is because it's part of my freedom of identity. And another part of my freedom is time and energy. It's also very, very important for me to have that freedom in terms of when I work. And it's not that I don't want to work at all. You probably know that even after I retired from corporate, I decided to still work on my business not because I really need this money to live because for most of the time of this year, I actually intentionally did not make any money. And so it's not necessarily because I need this money to live, but it is because I want to work just on my own schedule, just when I set my own time, just when I work, when I have the energy to. And one of my biggest complaints about corporate has to do with both of these freedoms, the identity freedom and the time and energy freedom. I didn't have an identity freedom because I kind of have to dress a certain way in order to work in corporate, right? Like you have to wear professional looking clothes, the work professional clothes, or even work casual clothes. and. Uh, to be honest, I kind of fell out of love of those kind of clothes. There was definitely a point in time when I'm like, oh my gosh, I get to wear like, you know, collared shirts to look more, you know, grown up. That's awesome. Like when I was a college student, I really look forward to dressing in work professional because it, it's kind of like cosplay. Like I get to wear clothes that make me look like I'm a professional. That's awesome. But that sort of like happiness was really short lived because after a period of time, I'm like, you know, I just grew out of love. I just became sick of it because it's different between, you know, wearing it once in a while and wearing it all the freaking time and wearing it all the freaking time. It was just not fun for me anymore. So I definitely fell out of love of, you know, wearing professional clothes and restricting my identity, restricting my identity to a single, you know, particular look. And another part of it is time and energy. Like obviously when you work a nine to five job, you're expected to be there from nine to five. And if you have clients or if you have team members are in different time zones, you have to adjust to them. And so there's definitely no time and energy freedom. And you can't just like, you know, decide to not show up to work because that day you're feeling uh, not 100% you. Like sure, if you're sick, you can take a sick leave, but there are limited times that you can take a sick leave. And so that's also a limited time and energy freedom, which is, you know, also one of the reasons why I decided to retire from corporate. And of course, along with that is also schedule freedom. Like you get to live life by your own terms, according to your own schedule. Whereas when you're in corporate, you can't just like, you know, decide to adjust your work hours from, uh, let's say 5 p.m. to like midnight, right? Like you can't just do that because you have to follow other people's schedules. So that's also another aspect to it. And another aspect to it is location freedom. Because again, when you're in corporate, a lot of times you have to go back to the office. And even the, these tech firms that did the whole work from home situation, a lot of them actually started going back to the office. And um, return to office is a thing for most of these big tech companies. And even for like smaller companies, I think a lot of them also want to have FaceTime. They want to see what you're doing and they want to uh, micromanage you. And so that's also another aspect that's very important to me, freedom, right? Location freedom. And so, you know, these three aspects create one of the core values that I hold, which is freedom. And another core value that I hold is independence. And when we talk about independence, we usually think about financial independence, right? Like having the money to sustain yourself, having the money to be able to say F you to any job that you don't want to work. And while I do agree this is an important part of it, I also feel like this is not the whole picture. I think the whole picture actually includes self. Self-freedom is a really, really big topic for me. 
this year. And I guess this is more in terms of are you able to create your own happiness? Are you able to create your own fulfillment? Because a lot of times you, you probably know that a lot of these external things we cannot count on, we cannot depend on, they're outside of our control. And when we bet everything on these external changes, like whether I get a raise, whether I get a promotion, whether he likes me back, right? Like all of these things are outside of our control and they're not reliable. Like if we bet everything on the outside, then we're gonna feel like our life is outside of our control. Then we're gonna feel like our feelings are outside of our control. But the truth is your feeling is actually within your control. Your life is also within your control as long as you don't depend on these external factors, as long as you create that self-dependence, that self-reliance. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of self independence. Self-independence, in my opinion, is not so much about, you know, just the money aspect, which is the traditional sense of independence, right? Everyone's like, oh, if you're able to create passive income, that covers your living expenses and you have financial independence. Like, sure, that's one part of it. But I feel like another part of it is also to have that self-reliance and to not wait for something, to not depend on something, to not beg for something and to believe that you have the ability to create your life, your freedom, your happiness. And so that is the level of self-independence that I'm still working on. I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm 100% there. Like, even though these are my values, it doesn't mean I'm like 100% there. These are just things that are important to me that I strive to get. So that's the second value, which is independence. The third value is exploration. And in terms of exploration, a lot of people, they think about outside exploration, you know, like going to a new country, exploring different cultures, uh, traveling, right? Like these are outer exploration, which is what I like to call outer exploration. These are important to me, but these are not the only things are important to me. I think what is equally important in terms of exploration is inner exploration, which is understanding yourself better, which also includes knowing your values. Like, to be honest, I had a sense of these values, like these core values of mine for quite some time. I kind of like know, but I didn't really dive into them until this therapy session when I'm like, okay, I feel like my core is wobbly. I feel like I'm going places, like not in a good way. Like, I, I feel like I'm you know, swing from one end to the other. And I'm going through, you know, different cycles and extremes. I like to go through cycles of minimalism and then maximalism and then pink and then all white and then my hair being dark and then my hair being rainbow. And so these are the catalysts to why I want to explore these core values. And this is also part of the inner exploration that is actually, you know, kind of ironically, and it's kind of meta, ironically, it is part of my values to explore myself to explore what's inside, to dig deep into who I am and what I really want out of this life. Because before you really know what you really want out of this life, you're just going to float around. You know, I, I feel like I've been floating around at least for the first 25 years of my life. I've been just floating around. I've been following directions. I've been doing what other people say are the good things to do. And I haven't really listened to my intuition. And one example that I gave to my therapist was that, you know, growing up, I was expected to get ace in everything, right? I, I was expected to ace every single exam and be good at every single subject. And I wasn't really allowed to have that one thing I'm good at. Like, no, you have to be good at everything. You have to be an overall A student, right? Like you can't just be good at one thing. Like it, it was a very no-no thing in China where I went to school. And so, I kind of adopted the habit of just like hiding my intuition and hiding my interests and just like brute force it <laughs> and to just be good at everything and to ignore what I'm naturally good at. And that also takes away a little bit of my intuition, my sensitivity to what I'm actually good at and, um, you know, my sensitivity to who I am and what I'm meant to do. And so that is what inner exploration is all about. It's all about exploring who I am and what I'm meant to do and what things come easy to me. Because after a certain period of time, you're so used to being a good student, you're so used to brute forcing it and to make yourself become good at anything. Like some might look at that as a good thing, but I look at that as a bad thing because I lose my intuition. I no longer know like, what is it that I'm meant to do? Which is why now at the age of 28, I want to explore the inner, right? So do the inner exploration. And you know, to summarize, there are three core values that I hold. One is independence, which includes the financial and the self. Two is exploration, which includes inner and outer. And three includes freedom, right? And then freedom, that involves identity freedom, time, energy, and schedule freedom, and location freedom, which are, you know, these three parts of the freedom value. 
or the value of freedom. And this also leads me to thinking that like, why is my business here? And as I evolve as a person, my business cannot stay the same or else it's gonna feel very incongruent. And I must admit that when I started my business, I was a totally different person. And even my therapist was like, like when she started seeing me, I think three years ago, I was very focused on just the financial independence part. I was very focused on the resources part, like how to make more money, how to create more income streams, how to create that financial independence. And even though this is still part of my core values, I wouldn't say this is the only part of my core value because my core value now has expanded into not just financial independence, but also self-independence. So with that being said, I feel like it is time for me to also reconsider, like, why do I want this business? What do I want people to feel after they come across my content? And right now, this is how I want people to feel. I want people to feel a sense of freedom and relief. I want people to feel like they just took a big shit. <laughs> they just, you know, they've been constipated for the majority of their lives. And now they finally took a really good shit and everything just went out. And they finally feel like everything is just no longer stuck. Like they, they feel like someone, like a plumber has come in to fix all their pipes. And now everything is free flowing. Their creative juices are flowing. Their happiness is flowing. And they just have this new sense of flowiness. <laughs> They just feel in flow. And I also want people to feel a sense of release. I think one of the biggest problems that we face in today's society is that we all have a lot of pent up emotions. Maybe it's resentment, or maybe it's feeling like the world's unfair, or maybe it's feeling like your potential hasn't been met yet and you don't know how to meet it. And it's all these pent up emotions, in my opinion, it's all these pent up emotions that create lots of shocking crimes, right? Like a normal looking person uh, who worked a normal job all of a sudden became a criminal like a mass murderer. And I don't think these are just, you know, an on off switch. Like one night they just decided to become a murderer. I don't think so. I think it's because they have a lot of pent up emotions that didn't get to release for a really long time. And when you don't release the pressure, like even if you're like cooking and you don't release the pressure, it's gonna explode. It's just gonna explode. That is just physics. So what I want to do for people is to help them feel that release of pressure. I don't think it is healthy for anyone to live under a high pressure environment for the rest of their lives. I just don't think that is the ideal. And I just see a lot of these advice online that I just don't agree with. Like people who are like, oh yeah, sleep is for the dead. You just want to hustle and grind for the majority of your lives so you can finally relax when you're like 80. But that's not the vibe here. Like I don't want any of my viewers to have to go through that. Right? And I also don't want anyone to feel like, oh, I have to pretend to be happy for all my lives because that is just what being an adult is like. I also don't believe in that. I don't want you to pretend to be happy. I don't want you to pretend to have an orgasm. Like that's not the vibe here. I want you to actually be happy. I want you to have that orgasm with or without a partner, right? Like that's what I want you to have. And another part of it is I want you to feel like you can shit. <laughs> Pardon for my, you know, not so elegant language, but I just want you to feel like a sense of relief, a sense of freedom, a sense of unstuckness, right? I want you to feel a sense of flow. So that's what I want you to feel. And these all tie back to my identity because I feel like you can't really have the sense of release and flow and relief if you don't have independence. And with independence, there's the financial aspect and the self aspect. And like, I see people who say that they have the self independence, like their ego is free and their soul is free. But when you don't have the financial aspect, how can you really be free? Because we have realistic problems here, right? We have realistic issues at hand. We need to eat, we need a shelter. These are basic human needs. Like how can you say you have achieved self-actualization before you have even fulfilled your physiological needs? And so I think the money aspect is equally important. And so I am not just about financial independence because I believe like there are people who have that financial independence, but they're still role-playing as someone else, role-playing as someone that they don't like. And I feel like a lot of times, like, of course, we're all just role playing here. We're all just playing this game of life. We're all just playing a character. But there's a difference between playing a character that you like and a character that you really, really dislike. And I feel like a lot of adults are playing characters that they actually dislike. That's why there's so much pent up tension, pent up resentment, hatred. That's why there's so much trolling even. Like these people who are trolling online, why do they troll? Do you think it's because they have like a perfect life offline? No, it's because they hate their lives offline. And so the only way for them to release a little bit of that 
pent up tension and that pressure and that resentment is by being a hater online. And so that is definitely something that I want to address and hopefully my content can do something about that. Another part of it is, is exploration. A period of time after I retired from corporate, I was not really bored, but I just feel like there is no meaning to anything. And I think it was because I lacked the outer exploration because after I retired early, from corporate, I didn't have to go to a job anymore and I didn't have to talk to coworkers anymore. And even though a lot of us like to think that, oh, we just go to a job for the paycheck, I think that's one part of it, but that's not all of it because there's also the social aspect to it. Like we go to work and we socialize with people and perhaps we don't like every single one of our coworkers, but it's still nice to talk to someone who's in the same boat, who knows what's going on, right? And work is such a big part of our lives that when you lose out on that, you also lose out on a big part of socializing. And so for a period of time, I felt very disconnected from the outside world. And that is a lacking of outer exploration. And of course, there's also the inner exploration, which is like understanding yourself and understanding what makes you happy. And you probably have heard the saying that a lot of people, they just buy things that they don't like to impress people they don't like, or buy things that they don't need to impress people that they don't like. And I feel like that's also what I've been doing for a lot of my life. I've been just buying things and doing things to impress people that I don't actually like. And that is the, I think that is stemming from a lack of inner exploration because I don't really know what I like. I don't really know what I need. And so therefore I would just like follow trends. You know, people say the Stanley cup is like a must get then therefore I get it. People say uh, the YSL lipstick is a must get, then you get it. People say the Birkin is like the it bag, then you get it. And so I think when you have a solid inner exploration, when you really know what you want and what you need and what makes you truly happy, lasting happiness, then you naturally get rid of the need to buy things to impress others or to buy things just because other people say you need it. Because then you'll be able to decipher what is coming from the outside and what is coming from the inside because you understand yourself. So that's the inner exploration. And then for the freedom aspect, there's three parts to it, right? There's identity, there's let, let's just call it schedule, which includes time and energy and location. And for identity, I definitely feel like, you know, the reason why I change my brand identity all the time is because it's actually part of my identity <laughs> to have that freedom, to just like get whatever color I want, to just be whoever I want. And if I don't have that sense of identity freedom, then I'm going to feel like I'm trapped. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. That's why there's a whole talk about niche, right? Like all the business owners are like, oh, to have a niche or not have a niche. Like this is a hot topic. This has been a hot topic for I think all of um, the past five years. Like everyone's just talking about, should you have a niche? Should you stick to a niche? Should you stick to a topic? Should you stick to a certain brand image? And like for me, my brand image is I want to be whatever. I want all the colors. I want, you know, all the fonts. And this is part of my brand identity is to be whoever. And so um, it might be confusing to someone who doesn't understand the core of it. And it was confusing to me too for a while because I was like, why can't I just stick to one thing? How come other people can stick to one thing and not me? And I think it's because we have different values. One of my values is to be free. And part of that is identity freedom. I want to be whoever I want to be. And even if I change my mind, I want to be able to do so, right? Even if I decide to dye my hair pink one day, I don't want to like have to have pink hair for the rest of my life because that also feels limiting. And if I decide to dye my hair dark, I don't want to like, have to get dark hair for the rest of my life. I also want to get pink hair sometimes and rainbow hair sometimes and, you know, short hair sometimes. And that's just me, right? And another part of it is schedule freedom. Uh, I feel like a big reason of why I decided to retire from corporate is because I didn't have schedule freedom. I had to be there from nine to five. I had to work at least 40 hours a week, right? I have to be there when my boss needs me. And so without that schedule freedom, I just feel like my life is out of my control and that does not bring me joy. And of course, location freedom is also very important to me. And why it's so important to me is because I want to feel like I can work from anywhere in the world. I don't want to feel like I'm limited. I want to work in Shanghai. I want to work in Vancouver. I want to work in LA. I want to play in LA, Shanghai, Vancouver, wherever, right? And I just don't want to be stuck in an office or a cubicle. That is just not the vibe here. And so with that being said, I just really want you to ask yourself, right? Like what makes you happy? What makes you fulfilled? What is important to you in your life? And before we find these core values, we're going to feel very lost. We're going to feel very confused because things just don't tie together. If you think of your life as like low pearls, right? Pearls or diamonds, whatever floats your boat, right? Let's just say pearls. If you think of your life as pearls, if you think of the different things that you do as pearls, then your values are the string 
that ties everything together, that connects all your pearls together and makes a really beautiful pearl necklace. And in order for you to feel that consistency, to feel that connection, I feel like it's very important for you to find your values, to find that string so you can string everything together. So everything makes sense. And, you know, quoting Steve Jobs in I think one of his uh, talks in um, a university, I forgot which one, he was talking about how, you know, looking back, all the dots will connect, all the dots will make sense. I agree about it to some extent, like, sure, maybe one day when you're like 60, you're going to look back and be like, oh, it makes sense. But you know me, like, I don't like to wait until I'm 60. And so I want to figure it out now. And one way to figure it out, in my opinion, after this therapy session is to explore my values and to find that string, right? Find that string that strings all my pearls together and makes a beautiful pearl necklace. And that is what I really want to do right now, to have that clarity. And having that clarity within... You know, knowing your values, that also helps you with relationships because then you're a consistent person to people around you. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode. Tagging me at charitung.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.